let's look at the various options we have through the Insert tab in OneNote Online. The first option is Table. Drop down menu allows you to click and drag an appropriate size table to have on your page. Once you have the table added, you can use the object box to make it larger. Then simply drag the columns to make them an appropriate size. Once you have your table, you can start populating them with information. We can highlight the text and we can change the alignment so it's in the center. Let's make it larger as well. I'm now going to put my cursor into the cell, a bit like Excel or a table in a Word document. I'm now ready to import some pictures from online. So let's look for a picture of an ant. Insert. Just gives it a second to pull it down. Cursor into the next cell. Same process. Let's insert a picture from online. Select the picture. Insert. You can also click on the picture. There's object handles so you can click and drag and make the pictures larger. So let's try and make them similar sizes. There we go. You'll also notice the table tab opens up along the top and this gives you various options for your table. So I can add some shading. Drop down menu allows me to choose any colour I want. You can also highlight the next row and add a different colour in there. So this is a really nice example of it used in a French classroom. So the young person has added a table with some pictures of the animals. We have the animals in French and then we have a recording with the student voice. The shot. The next thing we can do is insert documents. The file icon has a drop down menu. In here you have two options. I'm going to demonstrate the difference between the two options. Insert file as an attachment. You simply browse for the file you'd like to add to your page and insert. We'll now get an icon of a Word document. This could be Excel, PowerPoint or a PDF. When I double click on the document, I then have to download the document before I can view the content. However, the next option is File Printout. So insert file, file printout, choose file, let's choose the same file. So once this loads you will actually see the content of the Word document. So the teacher doesn't have to download every document to view what's inside it. This way the teacher could then provide some feedback through audio, video or possibly using the draw tools along the top. So that was Insert Files. The next one we're going to look at is Pictures. And again, it's found in the Insert tab. You place your cursor on the screen, the menu appears, drop down menu for picture, where you can browse for a picture you have on your computer. For example, I just uploaded the Education Scotland logo that I'd saved on my hard drive. I could take a live picture straight into my OneNote, this is particularly useful if using mobile devices, so learners can capture what's happening in their classroom, for example if they're doing a science experiment, and pull the picture straight into their OneNote. The last option is browsing online for copyright free material. This is very similar when adding pictures from online using PowerPoint or Word. You get the options that appear, or you can just simply search for a, a picture. You type in your search, select the picture, then click insert and the picture will appear on your screen. Once the picture loads, you then have some object handles where you can simply click and drag to choose the appropriate size for your picture. 
The next option along the top navigation is links. So I can add links to any website. That means I've got all the information I want in the one place. So you can see here I've added some links to some websites. When I click on a website, it will simply open in another browser tab along the top of my screen, keeping my OneNote still open in a tab. So it's nice and easy for me to jump between the two. I've also added some tags to highlight that these are web links. The other option I have on the right hand side is I've got an embedded YouTube video. This can only be done if using the OneNote desktop application, but it just means I can watch the video in the OneNote page. The next option along the top is audio. Now this is a really powerful tool when using OneNote. For learners, they can have all their information on one page, they can add some copyright free pictures, but they can also add their own voice. So for a teacher, you can capture pupil voice easily using the OneNote application. So I could just click on the audio and then click play at the top right hand side. We are finding out about the water cycle, how water evaporates into the air, water vapour condenses into once you click on audio, the audio tab will appear at the top where you can listen to the audio again, you can play it back, etc. Audio is also really good for teachers to provide audio feedback for their learners. You can also add video feedback, but you do need the desktop application to um, upload video. The next option, again back to the insert tab, the next one along the menu, is the maths one. However, we are going to create a separate video dedicated to the powerful maths tools within OneNote. There's emojis along the top, so these are really nice for gauging how your young people are feeling or providing some um, fun feedback for your young people. And again, it will just add to the page in its own object box so you can move it about your page. The next one along the top is forms. So forms can be embedded into your OneNote pages. That means you can just scroll through the form and answer it without having to leave the application. This can be achieved by clicking your cursor onto a page, a space on the page. So let's click over here. Then click forms. You may have to click to sign in to forms. Once it, you've clicked sign in, it then gives you the option to either create a new form or a new quiz, but it also pulls up all the forms and quizzes that you've already created. So let's just select one that I've already got created by clicking insert. So it's now inserted that form onto my page. So now my young people can scroll through the form in the page and answer the questions I have given them. The next option along the top is stickers. Again, these are really nice for providing some feedback for your young people. Put your cursor somewhere on the page where you'd like your sticker to go. Click stickers along the top navigation and you will see there's lots to choose from. You'll also see some stickers of a small pencil beside them. This means that you can edit the text that's in the sticker, making it customisable for your individual needs and requirements. So for example, I might select this one, but I might want to say remember to use full stops. So it's a fun way of providing some feedback. Once a sticker has been uploaded to your page, again it's got object handles so you can resize it. I'm going to put my cursor somewhere else on the page. I'm just going to choose another sticker. This one doesn't have any text. And again, I can move about the page and I can resize it. The last option along the top are meeting details. This means I can have all the information about my meetings in my OneNote. When I select meeting details, it will pull up any meetings that I have in my calendar. So this is today's meetings, but I could select the drop down menu and pull up the two meetings that I had scheduled for yesterday. This was a Google Meet, 
and this was just a catch up in Teams. These have automatically been pulled into my OneNote application. So when I click on one of the meetings, all the information about that meeting goes into my OneNote page and it has a space at the bottom where I can add some meeting notes. So that's everything through the Insert tab.